I mean, I can't even imagine buying a stock that doesn't pay a dividend. Why would you do that? What would be the reason you would do that? Hi, do you want to learn about a simple way in order to earn passive income while living in the UK? Or are you considering becoming a dividend investor when living in the UK? Then you need to watch this video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about a simple way to earn a passive income when living in the UK, i.e. becoming a dividend stock investor. And I'll also be talking about the three simple ways in which you can evaluate and find good UK based dividend paying stocks. Be strong. Be strong. Hello and welcome to The Nimble Nomad. My name is Arjun and on this channel, I talk about the tips, tricks and hacks to survive and thrive in the UK. In case you're new here, uh, on my channel, I share my experience of living life in the UK as a first generation immigrant. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about dividend stock investing as a source for passive income. And if you're interested in dividend stock investing, why not sign up for a Trading212 account? If you sign up through the link I have in the description below, then you get a stock which is worth up to a hundred pounds. And if you sign up to that link, I get a stock as well as full disclosure. In case you're wondering whether Trading212 is a good platform to sign up, I did a video of it on my channel in great detail. Uh, I'll add a link of it in the card above and in the description so you can go ahead and watch that as well. Now let's get into the main content of this video. I have always had a job ever since I graduated from university, uh, but the events of 2020 and the economic impact that the pandemic had on the global economy as well as the UK was a real shock to my system. A lot of people that I personally know uh, who are either friends or former colleagues either had to take pay cuts or even lost their jobs. And this really lit a fire in me to make sure that my income going forward is future proof. And one of the ways that I'm doing this is by trying to generate multiple sources of passive income to supplement my primary employment. And one of those things that I'm doing in order to build the passive income is to focus on investing in dividend paying stocks. Now, usually when I talk about dividend investing or investing with any of my friends or colleagues, usually people say, oh my God, that's really hard. And they mentally switch off. But trust me, it's not that hard and the results that you see are amazing. So I've always invested money, but I've never done focused dividend stock investing. And I started doing this more of it in 2020. And I can tell you from my own personal experience using very small amount of capital, I saw 200 pounds of dividend returns as of December 31st, 2020. And I can assure you that if you follow some of the guidance that I'm providing in this video, you will be able to do it yourself as well. Now, there are a lot of YouTube videos out there on dividend paying stocks uh, and dividend investing available. And the one thing that's in common in all of those YouTube videos is they go into a lot of graph charts, numbers, ratios, definitions, and personally, I found them all boring. So in the interest of keeping things simple, in this video, I'm gonna be talking about what is a dividend and how do you invest in dividend paying stocks. And I'll also be sharing some simple basic criteria that you should be looking at when assessing and evaluating a dividend paying stock. And trust me, if I can do it, anybody can. It's not rocket science and I don't have a special level of IQ. Okay, so what is a dividend? If you look up the definition of a dividend on Investopedia, it basically says this. A dividend is the distribution of some of a company's earnings to a class of its shareholders as determined by the company's board of directors. Common shareholders of dividend paying companies are typically eligible as long as they own the stock before the ex-dividend date and dividends may be paid out as cash or in the form of additional stock. So simply put, 
a dividend literally means to divide the profits. So basically, if you own the shares of a company that's publicly listed, you would get a cut of the profits by owning a piece of that business. And that's what a dividend is. So how does dividend investing work? So it's really actually quite simple. So you find a simple dividend paying stock or company and you buy the shares of this publicly listed company and you wait. And usually every quarter, the dividend paying company will pay out a cut of its profit in the form of a dividend. And this will usually be somewhere from five to 10 pence if it's a decent paying company. Why should you invest in dividend paying stocks? Now you're probably thinking that five or 10 pence doesn't really sound like a lot. And it, why should I be wasting my time looking for these companies and investing money in them? What you're missing here is the fact that if you buy a piece of the company and you get a dividend on a regular basis, and if you reinvest that money, the power of compounding really has a lot of strength in it. So I'll give you an example of AT&T, which is a stock that I personally own. If you bought at and stock just after Christmas in 2003, around, and it was priced at about $25 per share, the dividend payment you would get every quarter would have added up to $25 by 2019. The stock essentially paid for itself in just over 15 years. And this is irrespective of what the stock price would have been at the end of 2019. So the stock basically over that period basically went nowhere. But the fact is that the dividends themselves paid for the stock that you bought in 2003. Now, the other reason why you should consider investing in dividend paying stocks is if you are uh, a saver, which is you save money uh, off the basis of the income that you earn from your employment. Basically, the two things that you can do is you can put that money into a savings account. Now, this actually works against you for two reasons. One, because the money that you earn and you put into your savings account is actually losing value. And this is because of inflation. And inflation typically rises at about 2% per year. So anything that you save today will have lost money by 2% by the end of the next year. And therefore it doesn't actually make sense to do that. And then the second part is if you did decide to put it into a savings account and hope that the interest would earn money, that actually doesn't work in the current economic climate because interest rates are so low, they're almost next to zero. And in some countries, they're actually negative interest rates. So you would actually be paying the bank to hold your money for you. Okay, now that you you know why dividend investing is important, you're probably thinking, Arjun, where do I start? And what is the process by which that you should I should consider investing in dividend paying stocks? So let me summarize the three things that you need to look at when you're considering investing in a dividend paying stock. And then what I'll do is I'll go into each one of these in a little bit more detail. So the first one is basically the company history and the business model. And this basically will give you a context around what is it that the company does and how do they earn money? The second thing is the free cash flow. And I'll go into a little bit more depth and detail in this, but this is the ability of that business to generate money in order to pay the dividends that you're going to be relying on. And then finally, this is the most important bit, which relies on the other two factors, is the current dividend yield and the history of the company growing its dividend over a period of time. So buying a stock is like buying a business and you would never buy something that you don't fully understand. This applies to anything that acts as an investment. So when you're buying a dividend paying stock, the two fundamental things that you want to fully understand is understand what the company does. And secondly, how do they make their money and how much money do they make? Are they profitable essentially? By understanding the company and the business model and the revenue that they're making, you can make an assertion on whether the company is actually profitable and therefore any dividends that they're paying you or are likely to pay out are going to be secure for the future. 
if you consider like any of the historic dividend com- paying companies which have paid dividend over extended period of time these have been really large and successful companies that have consistently paid dividends over a long duration of, of period this is an extremely important factor to consider before putting your money into a dividend paying stock Okay, number two is free cash flow. Before I get into what free cash flow is and why it's important from a dividend paying stock perspective, I'm gonna share a clip of Kevin O'Leary who is a famous investor and he has been on Shark Tank, which is a famous US TV show. And he's gonna talk about what free cash flow is and why that's important from a dividend paying stock perspective. If you look at the volatility in the market around names that don't pay dividends, they're extremely volatile because there's no cushion of yield. What's, what's the value of a stock that never returns capital to its shareholders? I don't know because the only way you can make money is if somebody else is willing to buy that position at a higher price for some emotional reason perhaps or for some you know, foresight that maybe the company will return capital one day. And I think of, you know, what, when you learn as an investor over m- multiple decades is the only thing that matters is free cash flow. That's it. There is no other reason to own a stock. And with that philosophy, it brings you into a place where you focus on a company's ability to generate incremental cash flow because just owning a dividend paying stock is not good enough because you know let's say we find a stock today that's paying a three percent dividend yield and tomorrow because its forecast for sales get cut in half the stock drops by fifty percent now it's yielding six percent I don't want to own that stock either so my tests in this index that I've you know created with FTSE Russell looks at the balance sheet every year we test to make sure that the company is viable in its ability to generate cash. This is extremely conservative investing. This is for the long haul. These tools are not for, as you're suggesting, for spicy, you know, the hot stock du jour. I've done that, I've been there. You know, let the young legs do that. <laughs> I have zero interest in that. I don't care what the hot new stock is. You know, when, when, a, when a company comes public, I won't own it either. It's gotta to prove to me over multiple years that it can continue to generate cash before it even fits into what I'm doing. So I'm really boring and I like it that way. I mean, I can't even imagine buying a stock that doesn't pay a dividend. Why would you do that? What would be the reason you would do that? I I don't get it. So to me, that means about 28% of of the market, to me, is just speculation. A stock that doesn't pay a dividend is a speculation. It's not an investment. There you go. Free cash flow is king. I cannot stress this enough. Free cash flow is basically the money that a company generates from its operations and sales. And ultimately, in most cases, is the money that is used to pay its dividends to its common shareholders. Looking for a company that has consistent free cash flow that is available and it's generating over a historic period of time and is a company that has historically grown its free cash flow is supremely important towards dividend investing. And that's one of the main ways in which you can find a good dividend paying stock. If you look at the balance sheet of any company that has a historic return where the free cash flow has been increasing, uh, it is usually a good sign. What you don't want to be doing is investing in a company where the company doesn't have a great free cash flow, but it has a very high dividend. That probably means that the company can't cover the dividend payments through its existing uh, business model and the revenue that it's generating. So in all likelihood, the company is probably borrowing money to pay out its dividends. All of this information that I'm talking about, the free cash flow should be available on most dividend paying stocks, investor relations websites, or their annual reports. Okay, so this leads me on to the final point, which is dividend yield and growth in dividends. There are multiple companies which pay dividends and the dividend yield is relative to the share price and this is usually expressed as a percentage. So let's take two examples. So example number one is Apple. So Apple at this current point in time is yielding about 0.68% when I last checked. 
uh, based on its current stock price. And the second example is AT&T, which is a stock that I personally own, is yielding about 7%. Now, if you, were a dividend, if you are a dividend investor and you want to focus on dividend investing, what you want to be doing is investing in high yielding dividend stocks. So typically you want the dividend payment to be higher than 2% because this is the rate of inflation. Now, by doing this, you're protecting yourself against the fact that if the stock price that you invest in doesn't go anywhere in the future, you're still getting a return from that company's investment through the dividends that you're getting paid. So you're beating inflation and you're getting value from your investment. If on the other hand, you, you invest in something that pays under 2%, your dividend is probably gonna be very well protected, but what you are doing is you're losing money if the stock price doesn't go anywhere. Now keep in mind that a very high dividend yield doesn't mean that it's a very safe stock. You need to keep in mind that the free cash flow that I talked about earlier needs to be able to support the dividend yield that, I'm, that the company is offering. Often companies that have a really high dividend yield have it for a reason. One, either they want to attract investors because they, uh, they want them to invest in their company through the high dividend yield, and but then they may not be able to support that dividend yield and are having to borrow money to pay that out. And then the second one is some companies such as tobacco and typically in this current environment, oil companies, are offering a higher dividend yield because they have a very negative sentiment associated with it. Com people don't want to invest in these companies because they have a business model that is you know, not good for the planet or for people in general. The other factor that you wanna consider with dividends is you wanna look at the growth of the dividend historically. Now, if you look at some of these big companies such as Coca-Cola, General Mills, Procter & Gamble, these companies have paid out dividend for more than 50 years and they have consistently grown dividends over that period of time. These companies are known as dividend aristocrats and they are like really good for dividend investing. So this is another factor that you wanna consider when looking at the dividend yield and future growth of dividend in future. That's all guys. Uh, so that's all I wanted to share in this video. Apologies, it was a bit longer. Dividend investing is a topic that I can go on in great detail. I'll be doing a bit of a series going forward. Thanks for watching. And if you, this video has helped you out, do not forget to smash that like button and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Thanks very much. Goodbye.